Good morning, Hockey Nation fans and Detroit Red Wings fans. We got a little bit of a treat last night. It was a bit of a barn burner between Detroit Red Wings and the Buffalo Sabres. But more importantly, what two teams can face off with two superstar young defensemen each? This was crazy. If you start watching Buffalo, you realize watching Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlinin they are just set up for success for a long time on the back end. And we saw Devin Levy in that, and I'm not sure if that's the long-term solution. I always kind of thought he'd be more of a backup or a 35-45 you know, type goalie, and he might end up being that. Um, no mercy last night. The Red Wings have been scoring a lot of goals lately, and I'm just like wondering how much of this is because of Simon Evanson being added to the lineup. Now, we saw a couple other interesting things there, which was uh, Ben Sherrod. Good morning, Chloe Richard. How are you? Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. If you watched this game last night, I was like, wow, Power and Darlene are great. But then you go over and look on the other side of the ice. You go, Cider and Evanson are no joke. And you saw Evanson offensively. This guy's very willing to pinch down, very willing to – he can get back. He's quick. You know, insider is what he is. He's such a, he turned 22 yesterday. And even though the outcome for the Red Wings was a loss and the shootout, and that was interesting too. You got to be like looking at Buffalo and saying, they are not that far ahead of us. Now, I think on the, the forward line, you know, who's the Tage Thompson in Detroit? There isn't anyone. You know, Larkin's pretty good, obviously, but who's the Dylan Cousins? Michael Rasmussen was drafted ahead of Cousins, I believe, but you can clearly see Cousins has evolved into a real, real good player. And even Casey Middlestad's turned out for Buffalo. But just on the back end alone, if Detroit can figure out the front end to have dynamic players, and it's great to see Jonathan Bergeron and Lucas Raymond score. They're a little bit different than, say, Tage Thompson and our friend Dylan Cousins, but still very, very good as Bergeron gets on the on the, uh, <laughs> the board last night. Okay, so I'm going to calm down for a second. So the reveal was Tage Thompson got his 45th of the year to make it one to nothing. Then Austin Zarnick, who's been playing up from the AHL, assisted by the before-mentioned Jonathan Bergeron. He is the new Henrik Zetterberg of this generation. Let's not pretend he's not. I said this in the offseason. He's panned out. He had nothing to prove in the AHL. He dominated the AHL last year. He's so skilled. I was worried about the size and can he play wing? All those questions answered. This guy is an elite offensive talent that can produce at the NHL level. Jake Wallman working out, getting his ninth assist. Dylan Larkin put them up on a power play at 2-1 to one from the aforementioned Lucas Raymond. Even though he's off last year's pace, I think he's got 43 points on the year. He scored his 100th NHL point. Real good player. Is he 42 points in the year? I think he had 58 last year. But you can just see the skills there, and he works real well with Jonathan Bergeron. You can, he, he, lots of pucks can go through him. Very, very good player. you got to be excited about that. Probably the second best player from his draft year behind Tim Stutzley. If you drafted Alexis Lafreniere, Lafreniere's turning out pretty good. He's playing third-line minutes, but you know, don't be he's, – he's a good player. Rangers are stacked on the forward line. And that kid line in the Rangers is really, they're still young and they're producing pretty good. So they get a lot of chin music, but they're pretty darn good. And Lafreniere is pretty darn good. On Henry Yokiharu made it 2 2. 
from Alex Tuck, who has totally made the Jack Eichel trade one-sided at this point for Buffalo, in my opinion, because they got Peyton Krebs on that deal. They got Alex Tuck and a draft pick, but Tuck is outscoring Eichel. He is a much better person and leader on the ice for this team. Win-win Kevin Adams. Casey Middlestad getting his 40th assist. This is kind of like, this is the coming out party this year for Middlestad. Real good season. He's still a softie, but I mean, he's talents producing. And then Dylan Cousins getting his 30th of the year. This is a big power forward who's turned into a really good centerman. And that's good news. And Peyton Krabs getting his 17th assist. And Owen Power getting his 29th. Buffalo will go up 3-2 to two on the power play. Then they will go up 4-2 to two as Zegmas Gergensen getting his 10th of the year. Still hanging in. Owen Power getting another assist in this game. His 30th of the season. Then on the power play, Detroit says, no, we are not done yet. And Alex Chase on in his office in front of the net makes it. Four to three on the power play. A nice little no look pass from Dylan Larkin to him. And then less than a minute later, Simon Evanson bounces a puck off of Owen Power in front of the net for a, an open <laughs> angle shot. <laughs> so Simon Evanson with his second NHL goal, both I believe against Buffalo. Is that right? Yeah, it was. I thought it was both against Buffalo, not both against Devin Levy, maybe, but. Both shots were weird. <laughs> he scored. Hello, Danny. How are you, Danny Tabernak? What is going on? So at that point, it was 4-4 four to four going into the third, and they would not be done. Jordan Greenway acquired from Minnesota. Gets his sixth of the year, also from Casey Middlestad, also from Yoki Haru, making it 5-4. And then it was 6-4, Dylan Cousins from Tage Thompson and Rasmus Dahlin, his 55th assist. Then Jonathan, Jonathan Bergeron, you've got to be excited. These teams have injuries like the Habs. Red Wings had injuries at the beginning of the year. There are guys out, like no right Michael Rasmussen in Detroit. No Robbie Fabry in Detroit. You, you know, they they had uh, they traded Ronick, but he was injured before he left. Billy Huso just came back. He played last night. Uh, he did get a shutout, obviously, against Montreal, but didn't play amazing last night. I'm actually surprised he didn't go back to... Alex Nadelkovic. Good morning, Claude. Good morning, Danny. Thank you for joining. All right, then Dylan Cousins getting his 31st goal. Rasmus Dalsin, his 55th assist. Tage Thompson, 47th assist. But then Jonathan Bergeron from Matt Luff gets his 15th of the year. We know he played the first, what, 20 games in the AHL. So his numbers are very, very good. I think his points per game and his goals per game has exceeded Lucas Raymond. This was our big hope in the offseason, and I think Coach was surprised when I said this. Melissa, good morning. Thank you, Melissa, for joining. I'm excited to see you. Please do hit the likes and subscribes, guys. I know you guys are all subscribers, but at least hit the likes on this video. So it was 6-5 to five at that point, and then David Perron, who's been ripping it up lately, from Lucas Raymond and Mo Sider. His 23rd of the year for Perron, just pumping in some points. And that would make it tied all up at six, and they would go to the shootout. Well, I don't have that shootout up. Let me pull the shootout numbers for you because the shootout was pretty interesting, I thought. First in the shootout, we saw a miss by Tage Thompson. Lucas Raymond scoring a real nice goal. And then Jack Quinn, another really good young player, who I didn't know. I mean, you got to give so much credit to the coaching staff, particularly Don Granado in Buffalo. They've developed all these young players in a short amount of time. So at that point, it was tied 1-1. David Perron made a real good move, but was saved. A save by Devin Levy. And then Alex Tuck would score the eventual winner. Dylan Markin also stopped by Devin Levy. And that would be all she wrote. A 7-6 win for Buffalo in the shootout. Is it your birthday, Melissa? Or is it Danny's birthday? Neither? Maybe. I don't know. Guys, I'm really appreciative that you guys will be here. My kids thought I turned 56. I'm 51. Oh, geez. Well, happy birthday, Danny. That is cause for tabernak. I need a sound effect for tabernak. If you watch this game, 
you can see Owen Power, Rasmus Dolan, Simon Edmondson, very willing to pinch up, has added a, added a lot of speed and offense from the back end. Mo Sider, from the back end, these teams are very similar. There's, they have, it's just really exciting to watch. Uh, Mo Sider turning 22 yesterday. So next year is going to be really important. They need to figure out, it was your birthday yesterday. Oh, good. Well, happy birthday, Danny. We're definitely happy to see you young and healthy. So that's how she wrote. 36 shots to 32, 58% in the face-off circle for the Red Wings, two for three versus one for three on the power play. Not so many blocked shots last night. No kidding. There were seven frigging goals against you. That's not how you want to see it. But you see those young defensemen, and you got to say Detroit's in pretty good shape. You see Jonathan Bergeron and Lucas Raymond playing at their top. They're in pretty good shape. But you would you want to see Michael Rasmussen come back. I thought he was making really good progress, and I think that they took a big dip in their season when no, there was no Rasmussen in the lineup. Will Phillips Zadina work out? I am not sure. He's just been hurt and inconsistent. You see the talent, but there's no consistency there in his ability to produce offensively. So where is the top talent? Now, if your centermen are Larkin, Rasmussen, Valeno, Valeno looking good. He can skate. He's a big, wide body. Rasmussen's a monster. And if Sebastian Kosa comes along, you still got William Wallander in the wings. And I think they might have called up Albert Johansson. Albert Johansson is a very good skater, elite skater. Could be a top five, top six guy in the NHL, in my opinion. He's played very well in the AHL, and it looks like they might call him up for the next game. Oh, geez. Don't eat that. Whatever you do. So you can't see this, but you had goals from Chase on again, who's been a real good addition. I kind of hope they keep him. They may or may not in the offseason, but you can see he can still score at the NHL level. He does something nobody else in Detroit does in front of the net. Big, big veteran body, six foot four. He's still got good hands around the net. Jonathan Bergman, two points, a goal and an assist. Only 11 minutes in this game, guys. That's crazy. David Perron's been lighting it up lately, gets another goal. I think he's got nine goal, nine points, or he's got something like 13 points last seven games, something crazy like that. Goal and assist for Larkin. But the real story Simon Edmondson getting his second goal, Mo Sider getting two assists, although he was a minus one. Billy Husa was so-so, and Devin Levy was so-so in this game. Next up, you've got the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Penguins are in a three-way battle, and it could be four-way, but definitely three-way at the moment for the last wildcard playoff spot. They have not been able to get any escape velocity, and who's getting escape velocity suddenly is Florida. Florida should be a much better team, but they have five wins in a row, so that's a good thing for them. And they have the first wild card spot suddenly, but it's real tight. If you look at the wild card race, we take just a quick look. Nothing changes here. Nothing changes there. Although there's a point separating New Jersey winning again last night. What was the final score? Eight to one. Jeez, poor Columbus. 108 points to 109 points. Now, Carolina is a game in hand. You gotta like New Jersey going to the playoffs. You gotta like the Rangers. Boston's still clicking along. Four wins in a row. Like how many long winning streaks this team string together? Only 12 losses on the year. 127 points. What the heck? The Leafs have 103. Tampa not doing so great here. They're dangerous when you get in the playoffs, obviously. But you know, this is probably the best matchup for the Leafs. If the Leafs are ever gonna get out of the first round, this was the best matchup. Now, Florida, 89 points. Islanders, 89 points. Pittsburgh, 88 points. Three games each in hand. Now, look at Buffalo. Five games in hand. Buffalo's basically got to win four of five, I think. Maybe five of five to get into the playoffs. you got to think. These guys are going to get eliminated very shortly in Ottawa. And Detroit at 80 points, just that's not going to happen. I mean, they got four games left. They could get eight points, but that would not be sufficient. So they're basically eliminated. Six points, 87 points. Ottawa cannot make it. They are eliminated. 83 points. If you get 10 points, that's 93 points. These guys would have to lose and win. So there's there's like a ratio here. Some Any combination of three Florida wins or Islanders three wins, and it's over. That's what they need to do. They need to win three games each. Well, there's only three games left, so it's tight. It's going to go down to the wire. 
So Pittsburgh versus Detroit. This is a real important game for Pittsburgh. If they hope to get back up in here right now, they're on the outside looking in. You got to think it's in Florida and the Islanders favor at this point. Can they pull out three more wins? I'm not sure. Um, just taking a look at the scores last night, thumping in Columbus for New Jersey. Four to one win, Pittsburgh over Minnesota, and now they face the Red Wings. Red Wings have been scoring a lot. That's not good news for Pittsburgh. Florida, a seven to two win, punctuation mark win over Ottawa. This is the Florida team you would expect. Ridley Gregg getting a second goal of the year there for Ottawa, but. Other than that, Gustav Forsling, 13 goals. They're getting a lot of offense from the defense. Montour is a monster. 15 goals and 71 points. What the heck? That's a player that's definitely blossomed under Paul Maurice. As critical as I am of him, it's more about the defensive side and being really difficult to play if you're a goalie, particularly with Alex Lyon liking it. Alex Lyon who has replaced the young Spencer Knight who sent down to the AHL. As he's been making the most of what might be his last shot in the NHL. He's a 30-year-old NHL backup veteran. He's only he's played 36 NHL games, but now he's 8-3-0 and a 295. And you look, his numbers have steadily come down. This is a thing. Like when, when a goalie hits like 35 to 40 games in the NHL, suddenly you find what he is all about, and he's usually ready or not at that point. It's 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 a curious thing, but it's a strange math. You've got to like kind of eat it. Panthers are gonna be in. It looks like it. We're gonna find out. I mean, it's not as fait accompli as they say, but five wins in a row doesn't hurt, but they really need three more wins. <laughs> it's not, you know, straightforward here. I mean, Pittsburgh, any combination here, if they lose a game and Pittsburgh wins three in a row, that's what really needs to happen. Or, you know, they would need to win three in a row or Buffalo needs to win five in a row. That's how tight it is. Just no other way around it. The math, this is going to be an exciting race. Let's look quickly also. I do want to look at the West. Boston coming back. The emotional come from behind as usual. David Pasternak getting his 57th goal. You got to be happy with the offense in the NHL this year. 57th goal. Nothing from Matthews. Nothing from Marner. Nothing from Tavares. What is going on? Ryan O'Reilly, 17 minutes, 63% the faceoff, no points. Samsonov, 939 save percent, pretty damn good against Jeremy Swayman, 969. Tight, tight game. Not a game that's in Toronto's favor. They were up 1-0 and ended up losing 2-1. Montreal, 6-2 over Washington. Washington eliminated from the playoffs for the first time, I think they said, in eight years. So that's an emotional letdown for Washington, who had a real tough year with injuries. No Backstrom for a lot of the year. No Tom Wilson for a lot of the, a lot of the year. Ovi left at a critical time when the, his father passed, and that really seemed to hurt them enough that they missed the playoffs. Joel Armia with a hattie last night. What do you think of that? This is a guy who always had a reputation as being able to score in the NHL, but he's been real quiet. Harvey Pinard is you got to be happy. Dylan Strom, what, 40th assist? I mean, Dylan Strom, this was a good signing. 40, 60 points for this guy that nobody wanted. Arizona dumped him. Chicago let him go. Good job overall for a season where not a lot of people expected much. He's not a perfect player, but 60 points in 77 games and only a minus seven. It would be nice if he was a plus, but he's been in kind of a career minus, but not playing on great teams. So the guy had 40 points in 69 games last year for Chicago. You don't want to keep him. Maybe he didn't want to stay. He got the contract in Washington. This is a good pickup. High, high draft pick. He's always had good hands. Maybe not your favorite skater. Maybe not an energy type player, but he can score. All right, final. Let's just take a quick look <clears throat> at the standings in the West, where that stands. Seattle with 96 points. They have appear to be firmly in the playoffs finally. Oh, they are. They have clinched. And Winnipeg with 89 and Calgary with 89 and Nashville with suddenly 88. And Nashville has four games in hand. Like one game in hand, four games left to go, three games 
for Calgary, four games for Winnipeg, but Winnipeg not having a good time here. So this is also going to come down to the wire. Nashville playing their way back in. Two wins in a row. Every win is a big deal right now. Can Calgary steal the spot from Winnipeg? It's in Winnipeg's hands. They got four games. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Edmonton, 103 points. Now only three points back of Vegas. Six wins in a row for Edmonton. 9-0-1. The LA Kings have now had two losses. They're firmly in the playoffs. Minnesota was in first, dropped down to third. Colorado suddenly, a late surge. The Stanley Cup champions, five games in hand, 100 points. Three wins in a row, 8-2-0, no peaking in time for the playoffs. Dallas focused on the playoffs. Minnesota, you got to think, 5-3-2, and two, not bad. They are focused on the playoffs. Everyone's looking at the playoffs now. What's my matchup? Which one of these guys will get in? Who am I playing? Whew. Crazy. I know there's a six to one punctuation win over Tampa. So they're trying to stay in it. Nashville, three nothing over Carolina. Important game for them, keeps them in it. Vegas, five two over the Kings. Jonathan Quick, let's take a look. Was Jonathan Quick in the net for this? No, Brassois again. Interesting. And then Copley. Relieving Corpusalo didn't work out so well for Corpusalo. Looks like four goals on 10 shots. Nick Raw, pretty good season from Gavrikov getting his fifth. Kopitar's 27th, the ageless one. And the other ageless one is Fat Phil Kessel. What the heck? Hot dog Phil Kessel with 36 points. That's a pretty good contribution for a guy who got eight goals last year. Interesting. Well, here we're just gonna keep an eye on this. The Habs were sold to the Nordiques. Why wouldn't that be crazy? Well, we are going to wrap it up this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Four minutes before the hour. Detroit gonna you know have a few games left. The next one against Pittsburgh important game for Pittsburgh to get back into it right now. They are a point out and on the outside looking in on the wild card, Florida on a hot streak. Can they stay in? They only got three games left, only three games left for our friends in the New York Islanders, but they had a big win last night. Nicola. Thank you for joining as, as usual, please. The cost of being here is to hit the subscribe button. If you're a Detroit Red Wings fan, it's definitely exciting to see Lucas Raymond, to see Jonathan Berggren, to see Simon Evanson and Mo Sider are probably the most elite players there. We got to get Michael Rasmussen back. You got to be happy with the progress of Joe Bellano. Marco Casper is still in the mix. Dill Narkin fulfilling his potential. All good things. Thank you so much, guys. We will look forward to seeing you on Monday when we will recap the game Pittsburgh versus Detroit join coach tonight at nine o'clock Eastern time as per user usual, I believe for the power play show. Um, I don't even know what show it is tonight actually, but I'm just making that up. Hopefully I'm correct. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys on Monday.